All right, guys, so if you ever have a problem with your coolant temp sensor on your Ford Ranger, um, and it has the 2.3 liter in it, um, there's not actually a regular temperature sensor like you would see in these trucks. There is a cylinder head temperature sensor, and it is in the top right there. As you can see, I put a new one in there, and I had to grind down the sides a little bit to get the socket over it so I wouldn't break the plastic. But basically, you're gonna wanna take that out if the truck is in fail safe mode and the check engine light is on, it'll say something like rev limit reached and other things like that. And basically what you wanna do is take this socket and completely destroy the connector on the uh, sensor that's in there. This is what it looks like, that one. And you wanna rip that plastic thing off so that way you can get your socket down there and take it off. And then you go up and buy a new one. It's like 37 bucks and uh, you're gonna just carefully get the socket over the plastic piece on that one. I'm using a 12 point socket just to get rid of the chance of me breaking the plastic piece. And you're gonna wanna put that in there and barely snug it because I made the mistake of breaking the first one. And here, let me show you the old one. So here's the old one and you can see this is the connector that broke off whenever I was changing the uh, sensor itself I tried to get the connector off and it broke so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to solder on the new one that comes with the sensor. You're going to want to have flux for this um, and it's basically just a coating that you put on the wire to help the wire absorb the solder and you're going to want to have a few tubes of heat shrink. All right, and if you don't have a soldering iron, they're about $15 at the store. Just go to Home Depot or order it online. But you're basically going to clean the wires off. As you can see, they're kind of dirty. And I just strip these with a knife. Uh, you're supposed to strip them with a wire stripper, but my wire stripper is kind of shot. So I'm going to strip these ones too. And you want to make sure that you watch the direction that the connector came off and then compare that to this white connector because if it doesn't have a uh, colored connector like the one that I broke did, um, then you will need to know which wire goes where. And then clean those wires too with the paper towel because I just got them dirty. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my flux and just dab each wire in there. And then dab these wires in there too. I got my solder iron heated up. This is a Home Depot solder iron. And this wire goes on the green one. But like I said, you need to make sure that you keep track of that yourself. And then now I got that twisted on there. And I almost forgot the heat shrink. So I'm gonna get the heat shrink. I don't know if this is gonna fit over top of this wire. Yes, it does. So I'm going to cut it to size. Just slide that on down. Same thing with the other one. Now I went ahead and re-dipped those in solder just to be safe. 
or redip them in flux and clean them with a paper towel. And you notice I'm putting them together like a deck of cards just to make the solder joint as slim as possible. And I'm going to take my soldering iron and my solder. I'm just going to I don't know if you can see that, but the heat shrink started to shrink on there. So I'm going to, first I'm going to pat this down with the, pack it down with the pliers. And I'm going to take the knife. And this is why you make your wires long enough to deal with the heat. They give you this much wire, and that's for a reason. But just because that happened doesn't mean I can't tape it. I'm going to go ahead and separate that. Still needs to be packed down a little bit. Now I'm just going to put it over the solder and take this part of the soldering iron and just go ahead and use the heat off of it to flatten it onto there. And that's just a little too short, so I'm going to end up putting some tape on that. But for now, I'm going to move on to this next one. We'll try not to get this one as hot. Make sure your solder 
iron is tight and then clean. And it would be better if I had the right sized heat shrink, but I don't like to buy a whole box of heat shrink just for one size, so I end up using up, up as much as I can instead of wasting. I can go ahead and Shrink that down. And you can use a torch for this too, one of those mini micro torches. But I prefer to use the soldering iron for anything that involves heat shrink because it's just going to melt the heat shrink. I'm just going to wrap it up with some tape. Okay, now that I got that all taped up, I uh, went ahead and plugged it back in. Um, and made sure that it's nice and snug and clipped on there and then I put the boot over it I don't know if you can see that But the boot is over it and in the cylinder head properly to keep the water out and this is called a cylinder head temperature sensor not a uh, coolant temp sensor and I'm believing I believe that uh, This is the actual sensor for everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck and see if the uh, coolant gauge works now and it turns out, guys, that the temperature sensor does work now, but there's another problem that the engine isn't getting up to temp, which probably means that the thermostat is stuck open. And I believe that the thermostat on these engines is behind the engine, or it's down there. So I'm in for a real treat every, either way, but yeah, that's how you change your uh, cylinder head temp sensor. The reason it wasn't warming up was actually because of the thermostat being electronic. I just cut the wires off of it and now it works fine just as a normal thermostat. It gets up to uh, halfway on the gauge as you can see. It's not cooled down yet and it's got an electrical problem where the gauges stay on but dude it works so yeah that's a success.